Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to have a look at simulating a simple passive crossover in LT Spice. Uh, the crossovers of one of these slightly ridiculous suitcase boom boxes uh, that me and a friend put together. Um, over the years we've made almost a hundred of these things, uh, each one is unique, and you can see some examples of what we've made in the past here. Some of them have lighting, sirens, Nixie tubes, and they're all manner of uh, weird and wonderful creations. Uh, we've put speakers in everything from a false leg uh, to a traffic cone, and uh, currently working on a wheelbarrow. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about these uh, silly designs, uh, I've put a link to the Mickbox Facebook page in the description below. So let's begin by having a quick look inside this one. So when we open up this up, uh, we can see that uh, this device isn't quite finished yet. Uh, it still needs its uh, tweeters adding uh, and a few more tweets, uh, tweaks to this as well. Uh, the design inside is fairly simple. Uh, the thing is powered from a lead acid battery, which would normally connect in here. Uh, usually gives about 10 hours battery life on these things. Obviously LiPo uh, would be lighter for a similar capacity, but honestly these cases are pretty heavy uh, as it is. The extra weight doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. And uh, high capacity lead acids are much, much cheaper uh, than high capacity LiPos. Uh, so the power comes in through here, through the fuse, uh, it comes in through this switch, and then it runs out through this PCB I designed just here. Uh, and what this does is it switches off the power to the amplifier uh, when the battery voltage drops to about 11.6 volts. Uh, lead acid batteries don't tend to like being discharged much lower than that, so this helps to retain their capacity over many charging and discharging cycles. We also have Bluetooth in here. Uh, I use this particular module um, as I'm able to edit the device name. Uh, so if you want to see how to do that, I've actually made a previous video on it, so click the link above. Uh, it also has an auxiliary input just here, which is really useful. A lot of people that we make these cases for uh, like to use them for DJing through, uh, and it's actually really difficult to DJ with the latency uh, inherent in using a Bluetooth connection. Uh, and so uh, I know there are many board amplifiers now also with Bluetooth built in, uh, but in general, these aren't customizable as much, and many of them have uh, really irritating features, uh, like a voice that announces uh, when Bluetooth is connected uh, in a sort of broken English. Uh, and we don't want that sort of thing on these kind of, uh, these kind of devices. Uh, amplifier wise, uh, it does change somewhat between projects. Uh, this is an amplifier we've used quite a lot. Uh, this is the Lepi LP808. Uh, for its size, it can actually put out a fair amount of volume. The sound quality is, is reasonably good uh, in this price bracket, and the actual front panel sort of lends itself to the style uh, of a lot of these cases. Uh, you can see a couple of crossovers in here as well. Uh, so let's have a closer look at one of them, and I'll explain why I want to simulate these crossovers uh, to try and make this case sound uh, as good as it can. So this is what the crossover looks like up close. Uh, like most of these passive crossovers, it's just got an input on the left-hand side here, and you can see the output there for the bass and for the treble. It's got a couple of uh, capacitors on here, and these are uh, film caps. Uh, it's got a larger electrolytic cap here, um, 220 microfarads, obviously no normal, no real brand on that, but these things are pretty cheap. And it's got an inductor here as well. Now, if we're going to simulate this, we are going to have to find out um, what the, the value of this inductor is. Uh, again, I've made a video on that, so if you want to have a look at that, you can click the link above. Uh, but I'm just going to desolder this in a minute, and uh, I'll measure it with a component tester. The main reason I want to simulate this is because inside here, we've actually got these little jumpers. And these back jumpers are actually provided um, with the board. Now on the manufacturer's website, it says that one of these jumpers enables a bass boost and one of them enables a treble boost. Uh, but I'm just really interested in, in how applying these jumpers affects the circuit and also what effect that's gonna have on the frequencies that are let through on the, uh, the treble and the bass outputs. So um, what I'm gonna have to do to, to do this properly is to sketch this out, to look at the bottom of this. Uh, it's not a particularly complicated circuit, so I'll sketch out a quick circuit diagram for this. Uh, then we'll desolder this uh, inductor just here and measure its value. And then we'll start putting it together in LT Spice. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to take this inductor here out of circuit uh, so that we can work out what its value actually is. Um, so looking at the soldering joints at the back, they're, they're pretty dry. So I think what I'm going to do is add some uh, fresh solder to that first. Just some, uh, some nice lead-based solder. Hopefully this will make it a little bit easier to uh, desolder. Yep. Okay, and um, then let's see if we can unsolder this. Fortunately, I don't have a proper desoldering tool, but I do have this sort of powered solder sucker, which is generally okay. So let's give this a go. Okay, and 
with hopefully. There we go, so we've managed to, uh, to remove our inductor. Now the next step is to test this. Uh, the leads on this are very, very short, so I might have to add a little bit of wire to the end of these. Uh, the only inductor tester that I have is this component tester. Um, I did a bit of a review or I did explanation on how to check inductors a little while back, and I did use this. Let's see if we can fit those in there. If not, uh, pushing it. Let's try, let's see what happens. If I just hold that in place. No, it's not giving me a reading. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's coming up as a resistor. It might be that the value of this inductor is just too small to measure on this. Give me a sec, I'll just stick some proper leads on this and uh, we'll try and measure it properly. Just make sure it's making contact correctly. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, I can always measure it using my, uh, my oscilloscope. And as I say, if you want to know how to do that, um, I've got a previous video uh, on that, which I've linked above. Okay, so it turns out it wasn't possible to measure it using this component tester. Uh, what I did is I measured it using the oscilloscope and the technique I mentioned earlier. And what I got is a value for this for 4.3 uh, microhenries. So what I think we'll do now is uh, we'll move over to the laptop and we will go through LT Spice. we'll create this schematic and uh, and then we'll, we'll run it, we'll test it and see what a difference actually makes um, adding the, the treble boost or the bass boost. Okay, so here we are in LT Spice. Um, the user interface of this looks like it was designed for Windows or something. It's really not a very nice piece of software to use, but it is pretty functional and it does work quite well once you uh, know your way around. So if we start a new document here, we're going to start off by sketching out the schematic for our um, crossover. So the first thing we might want to add here is a voltage source. So if we go up to the top and go to component just here, we can find voltage in this list. Here we go, and uh, we can put it into our schematic. Now we need to set the properties of this voltage source. So if you right click on this and then click advanced, our DC value here is going to be zero. Uh, the AC amplitude, let's go for one volt to sort of normalize it to zero dB. Cool, and then we'll plug the negative side of this into a, a ground connection. You can press G to bring up a ground connection, and you can press F3 to go into wire mode, and then you can join things up like that. So let's uh, let's start off with our tweeter. Let's do draw that path. So we need a capacitor. So I'm going to press C and then Control R to spin the capacitor around. And then the speaker it's going to be driving is eight ohms. So we're going to press R to produce a resistor. Control R to spin it, uh, and then G to make a, a ground connection as well. Let's go back into wire mode and let's connect all of that up. Okay, and now we just need to set the values on our components here. So this capacitor is 1.5 microfarads. Uh, this resistor here is our speaker, so that's going to be 8 ohms. Uh, and select that, you just right click on them um, and then fill in the boxes. Uh, let's do a path for our uh, woofer. So our woofer starts off with an inductor, so we can press L for inductor. Um, and then it goes through a capacitor. So let's see again. And then, of course, it goes through our speaker. Uh, which is R, and then put a ground in there as well. And then again, oh, missed that one. And then again, let's go into wiring mode here, and let's uh, join all of these up. Okay. All right, so let's change the values here. So for our inductor, uh, we've got 4.3 microhenries, so let's put that down. Our capacitor here is uh, 220 microfarads. And again, our resistor is going to be a, an 8 ohm speaker. So let's put that in as an 8 ohm resistor. Okay, I'm just going to complete the rest of this schematic and then I'll get back to you in a moment. Okay, our schematic is complete. Uh, let's name these various branches, these different paths that we can take. Uh, it means it's easier to refer to them later on. So let's call, let's go tweet. Uh, that's going to be this path down here. Um, then let's go for uh, tweet plus. So that's if we've enabled the uh, the boost. And similarly, let's go for woof for this one here. And then let's go for woof plus um, for the other path just here. Okay, one final thing we have to do before we can uh, run the simulation is to edit the simulation command. 
to tell uh, LT Spice what to actually do. So if we go to the simulate menu up here and click edit simulation command, um, we're going to go for an AC analysis, um, type of sweep, doesn't really matter. Let's go for decade sweep, number of points per decade, 10, doesn't need to be too precise. Uh, start frequency, 20 hertz, and stop frequency, 20 kilohertz. And then we just put that on the schematic somewhere. Okay, it's uh, time to simulate that. So what we do is we click this little running person icon on the top left. Didn't get any errors, that's good. Uh, and then we need to add some probes to our schematic here that should appear in this uh, this window up here. So you can see that if we hover over where we've written Tweet Plus, it turns into, the cursor looks a little bit like an oscilloscope probe. Uh, so we click on that, and let's click on uh, Woof Plus, and Woof, and Tweet. Now it's getting a bit messy on here, so what I'm going to do is right click on the, uh, the right hand axis here. Um, this is the phase. I'm not interested in that for the moment, so let's clear that. Let's start off by looking at the tweeters here. Uh, the non-boosted tweeter response uh, is shown in pale blue, and the boosted tweeter response is shown in green here. Uh, this part of the circuit is just an RC high pass filter circuit. And uh, so adding the treble boost jumper simply doubles the amount of capacitance on the filter. Um, that's why we've got a capacitance of three microfarads here and a capacitance of one and a half microfarads here. The higher the capacitance is, the lower the cutoff frequency is. So by adding that jumper, we just let through more of the treble frequencies right across the spectrum. The woofer is where things get a little bit weird. Um, you can see this red line here, um, but without the boost on, a lot of the lowest frequencies are rolled off. Uh, and then the response is basically flat across the rest of the frequency range. The combination here of uh, an inductor and a capacitor gives us something called a series resonant bandpass filter. But the issue seems to be that the inductor value is far too low, uh, and so the high frequency drop off of the bandpass filter is well outside of the normal audio range. And um, if we increase the value of the inductor, let's see what happens here. So if I edit this inductor and make it uh, 430 microhenries instead, and then if we rerun the simulation again, You can see this is much more like what we might expect. You get a bit of a roll off of the, the woofer channel at uh, higher frequencies. The story is similar for the woofer plus path here. That's the one with the base boost active. Um, now, again, I'd expect to see a drop off in the higher frequencies as this is just a, an LR filter at this point. It's a low pass inductor resistor filter. Um, if we do the calculation for the cutoff frequency using eight ohms and 4.3 microhenries, it comes to 30 kilohertz for the cutoff frequency. Uh, and that's way above any useful frequency for audio low pass. Um, on the other hand, I guess, rolling off the woof at higher frequencies is not always that essential. Uh, most larger speakers don't respond to higher frequencies anyway, and they kind of have a natural roll off sort of built in. So I'm left with two options here. Either um, I have somehow messed up measuring the value of this inductor by a factor of 100, which, which is possible, uh, or the design of this crossover just isn't particularly good. Um, for comparison, let's have a look at a much better engineered design. So to finish off, I'm going to have a little look at this crossover. Uh, this is obviously much better designed than the uh, the previous one. Uh, it also supports much higher power uh, speakers. I think this one's okay up to 200 watts, uh, according to the, the data sheet. So what I'll do is, just like last time, I'll take off the inductors here and I'll measure them and then we'll get that mocked up in um, LT Spice and we'll see what that looks like. And then we can compare the two uh, frequency responses uh, and see which one, uh, which one looks better. So I've now modelled this uh, larger crossover here in LT Spice, uh, and as you can see, the results are much better. Uh, the crossover frequency here is somewhere around three and a half kilohertz, uh, and the shape of the frequency response is much better. Uh, the tweeters here use an RLC uh, high pass filter, and the increased inductance on the woofer channel uh, results in a far more sensible roll off uh, than we got on the cheaper crossover just here. So we'll leave it there for today. Uh, I'll try to measure that inductor using a proper LCR meter at some point in the future. And uh, if I have made a mistake, I'll leave a note in the comments uh, letting you know about that. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, see you next time.